get in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Uh, we love each other. And I think that's probably the hardest thing is, like, you know, sharing the backfield with him for four years. I wish I could do it my entire career. But uh, obviously, uh, that's also not what I wish, you know, from a, from a standpoint of understanding what, what my dreams and aspirations are. Um, but I, I want the best for him. Um, regardless of the situation, I want the best for him. So, um, you know, whatever that is, uh, I'm going to be just excited for him, whatever it is, however it plays out. There it is. Alex Madison on the Shefty podcast. What? I asked that question two weeks ago and I got like a non answer answer. What? What's going on, Alex? Did you maybe you need to ask it in a more Shefty type way? I'd like to hear um, how he asked. I asked him Alex, about, my you know, sources are telling me that Dalvin Cook might be out the door. What's funny is no one will just say it. So he, he goes, he's talking about like, yeah, the toughest part is I love sharing the backfield with him, but, but he won't like, but whatever happens, you know, whatever happens, I just want, want whatever happens, I want him to be happy as long as he's not blocking my path for 200 exactly. carries in 2023. As long as he's not, not wearing number four for the Vikings, <laughs> I love the chef. What is, real quick, before we get in here, this is a Write That Down Wednesday on the show uh, and presented by our friends at TCL. No matter what you watch, TCL has award-winning TVs for any budget, any space, all with stunning picture quality. TCL makes more than just TVs. They offer mobile products, audio devices, home appliances. TCL brings you joy and simplicity through innovative technology. Learn more at TCL.com. What's taking so long at this point? Are they, it's not... Where's the leverage point now for a team other than like a blown ACL? Maybe that's what they're waiting for. A starting running back to tear out their knee or something in an OTA. Is there any way, like, is there a plausible explanation that would absolve the Vikings of not having blown this though? Like, I just don't, why wasn't this just done in March? Like if he wasn't coming back, which we've been talking about since March, just why wasn't, yeah, just why wasn't it. this just done? And And you know what, at that point in time, get a draft pick for the draft because he triggered, if I'm not mistaken here, Dalvin triggered his bonus because when he had that shoulder surgery, which I'm sure he needed, the money became guaranteed, right? So like, I don't, what I don't understand is somebody give me an explanation why he's still here. It's like well, the guest that won't go away. Well, also, so let's say they have to cut him at this point. Let's say there's just no more trade offers. I think they're going to get a trade, but let's say there's no okay. more trade offers. Oh, yeah. If they cut him post June first, they have, which by the way, we're post June first. So like, I should just say, if they cut him now, yep, they'd have three million dollars in dead cap on their books for next year. When they could have just cut him a week ago, or cut him back in March, or traded him back in March. So I don't know. I don't know what's happening. It's unfortunate. Let's mm -hmm. get to some predictions here, shall we? This is write that down. Let's hit the music. Most make predictions and then never admit they're wrong. Yeah, that's not Mackie and Judd. This is the place where we just totally own our horrible predictions. Write this down. And eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Write that down. It's Write That Down. Write it down. You like writing things down. With Mackie and Judd. Presented by Burnsville Heating and Air. Welcome back to the show. And while you should definitely contact Burnsville Heating and Air for all of your HVAC needs... That's not what today's message is about. Today is about hiring. Burnsville Heating and Air is hiring. If you're a fast learner, by the way, they'll, they'll train you too. If you've never worked with HVAC systems, they will train you. They have great infrastructure in place. If you're searching for a summer job or if you're a recent college grad, for instance, you can work close to home with full-time jobs throughout the seven-county metro area and western Wisconsin. Join the rapidly growing team of heating and cooling experts for over 35 years at Burnsville Heating and Air. Apply now at BurnsvilleHeating.com. Just click careers. BurnsvilleHeating.com. Click careers. Here's how it works. Every single week, the only show in America that actually keeps track of our predictions and holds each other accountable. We keep track of statistics like completion percentage and touchdowns. It's three Vikings or football-related predictions from everybody each week. They must be quantifiable. That's really the only main rule. And listeners, if you want to participate, like our guy Brock is about to, you can send Declan a message through the Score North app, and we'll get you scheduled for some time this summer. All right, let's go through the accountability session here. 
gentlemen. So in the absence of things coming off the board, and there are a couple things that came off the board, we're going to highlight predictions that are still on the board that are interesting. So Judd, you had nothing come off the board. You did say at one point the Jets would be featured on Hard Knocks this year. We still so they have yet to announce it. There's big controversy because nobody wants it. So there's like four teams, the Bears, the Jets, there's like four teams, Washington, and I forget the fourth, that are that basically can be picked and can't say no. But everybody said, we don't want this. So I think that there's some consternation about like, okay, who do we pick then? Yeah, so why can't, but don't they usually, ju- that happens every year, right? No one really wants to do it. And then they just shove it down someone's throat in March or April. The last time I remember a team actually asked for it was like Dallas, uh, Six Jira. years back or so, because yeah, because Jerry's like, I love the camera. You do time. it every year, yeah. But um, yeah, I guess it's it was announced. I want to say because I I read something about this a couple days ago. It was announced last year in twenty two in like March, right? So it's like okay, in March, it still hasn't been announced, and it's June. And they don't do it with new coaches, so the Vikings were ineligible last year. But the Vikings are eligible this year, right? No, they're not because they it's if you've made the playoffs in the last two years, I believe you, oh. you are not. So, so, and the amazing thing is the Vikings have avoided this thing, which is now what, 15 years old, 20, I, I don't even know at this point, but the Vikings oh, oh, have six or something. Yeah. No. The fact that they didn't find a way to get Zimmer on amazes me. Yeah. He was a star when the Bengals were on back in King, the day. King of the F-bomb. So, so that's still on the board for you. All right. All right. Old Macadac said by today, Ooh. by this week's write that down. We're going to have a Justin Jefferson contract extension and a Dalvin Cook resolution. Well, neither one of those things have happened yet. Yep. As for a prediction that's still on the board here, I said the Vikings will add more money or years to Kirk Cousins' contract before they draft a quarterback in the first round. I feel even better about that prediction now compared to when I made it. I think I made that prediction like during the season last year. I think it's looking fairly solid in my opinion. No, yeah. there's a chance. I, I wouldn't be shocked if they came to some sort of agreement before the season. Maybe that can be a prediction today. Maybe someone can stick their neck out. Listeners, nothing came off the board, but Matt, here's one that remains on the board. Matt said the Vikings will sign an undrafted free agent kicker who will replace Greg Joseph by week one. You kind of floated this notion on your OTA observations. The this Georgia week. kid. Nice leg, nice follow through. I really, th- I, I think he's got the mechanics. What makes it such a nice follow through? Very fluid. It's a very fluid. Some some guys have a, a abrasive. It's not really fluid. This kid's got the hip, the motion. It, it's like uh, pitching. It, it's the same type of mechanical thing. Like when you see a pitcher, free and easy and loose, you can tell, right? Good mechanics. Yeah. This kid's Watch got your the, back, Greg. Got the kicking motion. Watch your back. And then, Declan, you said Jordan Addison will be in pads and practicing before the conclusion of OTAs. So I think OTAs are still going on. Tomorrow is the last of the nine. So if we have, if we see him on Vikings.com, well, no, correct. Actually, it wouldn't. This was dead on arrival out of Declan's mouth when he said Jordan Addison will be in pads. Oh, you're before ca- the conclusion oh, you're of OTA. Oh, Dex. Right? The rules state you cannot be in pads until the fourth day of training camp. So, Dex? well, oh, you're. W- oh, I mean, am man. I being a, am I being a dick? Like, well, yeah, it's... of course you are. But I mean, that's the whole point of the show. Um, <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, you're right. And no, I remember I mean... when when Declan said it, he said it, and I did, I did, I was kind of looking at you, Judd. I said. We good? Is this? I was I was playing okay. the game a little bit. I knew that I knew that he said. What if pads. he comes out in pads on Thursday? Violates all <laughs> okay. rules. If of he OTA. does, if he's touchdown. just standing on the sidelines in his shoulder <laughs> pads, not doing that anything, then. <laughs> oh my god! So yeah, you can't. The the rules state you can't be in pads until the fourth You're day right. of training camp with the new CBA. You're right. So, anyway, You're sorry, right. sorry, Dex. That's no, okay. He's playing the game. All right, Declan's still dominating here. Uh, 39% completions. Judd, 33%. I'm at 31.5. Listeners at 26%. Old Macadac has five touchdowns. You guys are one touchdown behind with four apiece. Listeners with one touchdown on the season. 
career stats going back to 2021, Declan with a narrow lead of about 1% over Judd, 35.7 to 34.8. I'm at 32.1. Listeners at 23.4. You guys have a long way to go in the touchdown battle. 38 touchdowns to Declan's 27. Listeners, 28 Judd with 22. So there's your accountability session. Here on Write That Down. Let's get uh, our guy Brock into the mix. Brock, what's going on, man? Welcome in to Write That Down. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. What's your background as a Vikings fan? When did you first become a fan? Uh, born and raised. Father was a Vikings fan, so born and raised. My first major memory is the 98 season. So that heartbreak. Yeah, God, help where to start. A lot so of people, people started there. Hey, why don't you just try this drug here? Yeah, yeah. this is great. It's free. <laughs> it's free the first yeah. time. You'll you try. Oh, this is great. This oh, Randy man, Moss drug. The best Cunningham. high I've ever had. It's We're great. going to the Super Bowl. We're going to. Oh <laughs> no! And I actually was so disappointed when we drafted Randy Moss. There was some running back at the time that I wanted. I don't even remember who it was to this day because it's just a blip now. But. I was very disappointed with the Randy Moss draft. I'm actually going to pull up the 1999 that's NFL great, draft to see if we can figure out which running back Brock wanted. Let's see. It was a running back I wanted, yeah. So there was a guy on the board probably that you thought they should have taken? Or was it a guy like Robert Edwards got drafted? Who are the running backs here? Uh, oh, Peyton Manning, number one overall that year. Oh, Curtis Enos to the Bears with the fifth pick. Fred Taylor to the Jaguars with the ninth. God, look at all these running backs. Robert Edwards, three running backs oh, in the top Edwards 20. Was, was Robert Edwards. Edwards was a stud. Yeah. Uh, John that. Avery, Mississippi running back, first rounder. And then, I don't know, there's probably some other guys in here. Any of those ring a none bell of them, for you? None of them ring a bell. I mean, I was a, I was a kid, so I, I wanted a running back at the time. You didn't know what you were, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Barry Sanders, trade for Barry yeah, Sanders. Yeah, but back then, that, that did make sense. I mean, you got your bell cow back now, and you're all set for it. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, they go up on stage with the neck roll while they shake hands with Paul Tagliabue. Congratulations, you're going to carry the ball 375 times, be out of the league in four years, and have CTE. Yeah, I can cuss continually. <laughs> So anyhow, all right, we're going to go around the room, three different laps, three different predictions. So we'll start with Brock. You have the first prediction, sir. All right, write this down. Marcus Davenport has more sacks than than Zarius Smith in 2023. Ooh. Okay, off the record, is that maybe Zadarius being injured? Do you see Davenport finally cashing in and getting sacks? Like, what do you sort of see? I think Davenport gets a lot more opportunities in the Flores system than he had last year with his .5 sacks. And I think Smith just continues his slight downhill fall. Love it. Love the aggressiveness. All right, Judd. All right. I'm going to go back to a well I think I drank from a year ago. It didn't turn out to be right then, but damn it, I'm going to keep trying. Drinking from this well. Justin Jefferson will throw at least one touchdown pass in 2023. Yes. Uh, he threw a, a few well. passes. He's, a he's, well. got a, he's got a great arm. I see a downfield, and so it's not a it's not off the record a screen pass this time. I see a downfield shot that's not to Kirk. It's KJ, perhaps, Addison, perhaps. Justin Jefferson will throw at least one, just so you, you guys don't use this against me and say, well, he threw more than one. At least one touchdown pass. Okay. Now, I don't, yeah, I think you're good on that, too. Like I think we kind of decided if someone says, like, one touchdown pass, it yeah. means at least one. I think I don't trust I think we've kind of I don't trust this show one bit, one iota. <laughs> you shouldn't. No. All right, over to Dex. All right. I'll uh I'll just try to will this into existence here because we've been just talking about this for months. Write this down. Dalvin Cook will be off the Vikings roster by next week's write that down. <laughs> Good luck. By next sir. week's someone's write gonna that already, someone's gonna just, be right at some point. I just crawled out of that well. Yep. Declan yep. can crawl in. I'm going to crawl. I'm going to drink from that well. I'm going to stay in that well. Uh, but yeah, he'll be off the roster by next week's. Write, write that down. down. All right, write this down. I'm going to go for it. The Vikings and Kirk Cousins will agree to a contract extension before week one. Before week one. Or right. I guess because that's kind of nebulous. By the first game. By the, by the first game of the season. So... I think what they probably did, I think they wanted flexibility for the draft. That hey, okay, if we find our, if we land Anthony Richardson or whoever, right, 
awesome. Then we have Kirk for one more year. That guy can sit. But now that they don't have that guy, I think they're going to say, okay, well, we don't really want to go in with no plan for 2024. So I think this now that now that this is kind of played out, the smart money, I feel like, is on at least another year of Kirk Cousins. Okay. Okay. Write this down. Okay. I'm All right. That. Back to uh, back to Brock. All right. Write this down. Jordan Addison will have at least 1,200 yards receiving this year, which that puts him eighth for rookie rookie receiving yards. Wow, man! If if he gets 1,200 and it doesn't eat into like if it's, if Jefferson stays healthy, and you get you know 3,000 yards between those two guys plus whatever KJ oh, yeah. Osborne gets you plus TJ Hawkinson plus hmm. the running backs. It's unbelievable. So too Josh much talent. Oliver. Too much, too much talent on this team. <laughs> Love it. Write this down. All right, back to Judd. Trevor Lawrence will be named the Associated Press NFL MVP for the 2023 season. Mm. Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence wow. will be the A- so th- that's the official one, the AP NFL MVP in 23. This is this is bold. I think it's a touchdown for sure, just because oh, you're yeah. you're pinpointing. Yeah, any home. MVP, but so here's the interesting thing there. The Jaguars get a really weak schedule in 2023 and you need mo- most MVPs. The team has to win like 11 or 12 games for you to, to get that consideration. Absolutely. And if you look at the Jaguars this year, it is like that division is very much gettable so they're going they might even sweep their division this season so they could pretty easily win 11 or 12 games he puts up like 4500 yards i mm-hmm. this is a good prediction write this down it's good all right dex all right next prediction for me uh write this down daniel hunter's next extension will be exactly a 3 year deal It'll be exactly okay. a three-year deal. The extension will be a three-year deal. I don't want to get into the nebulousness of them like ripping up, like adding more money or doing any of that. The X extension that is reported is a three-year deal. Exactly. So can I? I'm, I'm going to probe a little here. So right now he has, he has this year, but then he has two void years. But those would be wiped out, right? Those mm-hmm. don't exist. Those so so he's on he's under contract in 2023. Let's say they sign him for 2020. So you're saying three years on top of 2023, right? I'm saying yeah. If when Pelissero or whoever breaks it says three years, Vikings had Daniel it. Hunter have agreed to a three year extension. If it's two, and if it's four, it's four. Wrong. I'm out. And void right. years don't count. If it's three years and then seventeen void years, like the Vikings love to do, it doesn't. That the, the right. void years don't count. Okay. And I I don't think so. I think that that is actually an accounting thing that is often not reported initially. So like Dex is right. When, when the initial report comes out, it has to say three years. Okay. Yes. I got you. Here, Here for that. Go. Write this down. Sounds good. All right. I'm going to make another, uh, a different player contract prediction here. Hmm. Write this down. TJ Hawkinson's new contract. It's kind of a parlay. I'm saying he's going to get a new contract. So TJ Hawkinson's new contract will eclipse George Kittle in guarantees. And so George Kittle, his contract called for $40 million in guarantees. So I'm going to say, just to make it simple, Hawkinson's next contract with the Vikings, which will happen this season, yep, um, will have at least $40 million in guarantees. And I guess I should say wow. he will sign it before the first game of the season. Just so because if he if I don't think they would let it linger, but I just want to put an end date on it so it's not sitting open. Okay. So yeah. Well the Kittle's like 30, right? Yeah. He's a little he's or is he 29, maybe, something like that. So Hawkinson's gonna say, I might not be as good as Kittle, but damn it, I'm five years younger, four years younger. So you better pay me. And I'm emerging like into down. an elite talent. Yeah. I might not be able to block very well, but I still <laughs> want my money. And I know you guys have it. Okay, back to Brock for his third prediction. All right. Well, with all those yards Addison gets, JJ's going to get his, KJ's going to get his. Kirk Cousins, write, write this down. Kirk Cousins receives at least one MV, MVP vote in 2023. Wow. Wow. Do they, by the way, Judge, how does that work? Do they show, like, 
they do all now. the players who get they released to vote. Okay. I think they didn't used to, and I want to say starting it might have been this year. You actually get that. Okay. So yes, so we, we will see that. So you think off the record? You think he's in for maybe even a better year than last year? Yeah, I'm thinking you know at least that 4,500 yards like he was last year. He'll be at least top five, probably top passer in the NFC. Got all those great AFC quarterbacks that like to throw the ball a lot, but definitely top do, passer in the NFC. Do they win a playoff game off the record? So that was – I almost had a playoff prediction in there. Uh, I, I I think they win a playoff game this year. I think we win okay. a playoff game. Wild card okay. game. I don't think we – I think we don't – I don't. we won't get a bye. We'll play in the wild card round. I think we win a playoff game. Okay. And that would be what? Kirk's second playoff win if he's the quarterback for that playoff yes. win? Yeah. Saints. Saints and then this one. Look out. Brock, great stuff, man. Thanks for taking some time out. Since you've got this life-changing platform on Purple Daily, is there anyone you'd like to thank that brought you to this pinnacle moment? Yeah, well, my father, you know, like I said, brought me to this Vikings uh, Vikings fandom. But uh, one person I want to want to shout out here is like my buddy Greg. You know, you were supposed to get me that shirt to wear for this uh, Write That Down episode, and you didn't get that to me. So, Greg, dude, Greg, Greg, what are we doing, guy? What, what, what are Greg? we doing, guy? Come on, guy. Uh, Greg, Greggy, Gregers, why? Greg, why didn't you get yeah. that? So I'll see him week one. Uh, I'll see him week one. So I'm going to give him an even harder time in person. <laughs> Screw you, Greg. Yeah. Screw you. Damn you to hell. I'm just kidding. Don't Greg. follow yeah. through. <laughs> you don't follow through on your commitments, Gregers. <laughs> Greggy boy. Love yeah. it. I love it, guys. Thank you. All right, All right Brock. See you, Brock. Good luck with your predictions, man. Thanks. There he is. Guest listener predictor Brock. Turn that classic Brock back on, Brock. Fun... Brock yeah, can I'm... turn his classic Brock. 38 special. Get it on again. <laughs> Yeah, before we had Brock on, he had some... We were just talking. He had classic rock kind of blaring in the background. We said, I think copyright-wise, we probably can't have that. But can't. but then we started talking about the classic rock format of radio or wherever you would... Find, like, even if you went to a classic rock playlist or something on Spotify. I feel like classic rock stopped in, like, the early 90s. They stopped updating their playlist, and they said, oh, we're good. And 1992, and they're yeah. like, yep. That late seventies, mid late seventies, we're good there. Yep, it's the same, right? Like KQRS in the Twin Cities, they're not they're not playing because I was telling you guys I would listen to KQRS in the early to mid nineties, and you'd hear mid to late seventies music that was fifteen to twenty years old. So wouldn't it stand to reason that if you turned on a classic rock station now, that if you kept in line with like playing music that's about twenty years old, what, what would you be hearing? You'd be hearing like Breaking Benjamin or something, right? Well, even or like, uh, three doors down. Even KS95 has changed their tag from 80s, 90s, and today. Isn't it now 90s, 2000s, and today? Like they've removed the word 80s. I think 80s, it might even be today. I think, it's, dude, I think it's just today. Just it's today. today's hits. It's right? today's hits. So you can Taylor manipulate Swift it. All the time. That's what it should be. Yeah, so that's what we should do, actually. Four hours of take. Single again. Yeah, yeah she's well, that, Judd. that broke up. That got done quick. So I'm trying to figure out what if, happened there? if the Austin Reeves thing is legit. Have you guys seen the Austin Reeves rumor now? Apparently they were spotted together, Taylor wow. Swift and Austin. Reeves. Oh, that. And I'm trying to, sure. and I'm trying to figure out if it's if Poor it's guy. just. Yeah, I agree. He's if that's uh, just a I mean, rumor. I mean, what I mean by that is he's going to be the subject of twelve new songs in yes. her next album. Yes, she was dating the guy from 1975 for like Shut a up month. And dribble. You um, couldn't make that shot. I don't know. <laughs> Those are the song titles. You can't shoot straight. <laughs> LeBron was right. Yeah, LeBron was right. <laughs> Where's D'Lo? <laughs> Where's D'Lo? All right. Well, before we get to our final few predictions here and some more uh, Taylor Swift dating fodder, we should shout out our friends over at Athletic Greens. AG1 is like nutritional insurance to start your day. One scoop mixed with a bottle of water. You got your full allotment of nutrients for the day. And uh, if you're like me and maybe getting all the right nutrients from your meals during the day isn't always feasible or you're just busy or whatever, improvising on the fly. AG1 is huge with 75 high quality ingredients that give you important daily nutrients. For me, brain fog lifted, energy levels heightened, helps with my gut health. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash purple daily, athleticgreens.com slash purple daily. Also, uh, our friends at 3Jack, if you're looking for a lunch spot in the Twin Cities, uh, we highly recommend 3Jack in the North Loop around here. 
Absolutely. It's a great spot to uh, to enjoy, obviously, some golf simulation, but also you can enjoy these nice, delicious new burgers. Look at these burger specials here. You tell mm. me you don't want this great burger on the it's patio. It's smiling at It's smiling it's, at me. Look at it. It's literally dripping, waiting for you. Okay, that's exactly what this burger's doing here. In fact, I encourage everyone, whether you're in the North Loop, like I used to be, whether you're a business owner, whether you're looking for a happy hour, go get Three Jack Lunch. It's not just golf simulation. They have a great uh, array of menus on their lunch menu and on their dinner menu, too. You can get this burger. You can get their nachos. Friendly staff. A really cool environment, too, if you want to be inside with all the golf balls that are basically uh, made on the ceiling, too. Go check out 3Jack for lunch, too. You can go to 3Jack.com to book that bay or learn more information on these burgers. You can go to 3Jack.com. Yeah, and uh, tell them that uh, you heard about 3Jack on Purple Daily. But, yes, it's an amazing, amazing spot. All right, final predictions here. One more trip around the room, Judd. Write that down. All right, I'm going to uh, take the rare opportunity here to uh, delve into the world of college football, which I don't do a lot. But this occurred to me. The more I read about th- this guy and his unhappiness about the current state of the game, and then I consider the fact that he is going to turn 72 in October. Write this down. The 2023 college football season will be Nick Saban's last at Alabama. Hmm. The, two, okay. the 2000, he's going to be 72 in October. I, he, he, you know, the an NIL thing he absolutely hates in part because it hurts him. I would guess in some ways, because now it's a financial game to recruit, but I think Nick Saban will be coaching his last game at, and just to be clear at Bama. So this leaves open a door to return somewhere else eventually. But I think this is last year, 71 years old, him and Bill Belichick are both 71 years old at some point God, you're in your 70s i know he's nick saban's making like 10 plus million dollars yeah, a year but, but he's richer than he's fine now yeah yeah in fact he he was on belichick's coaching staff in cleveland yep he was an that, assistant dude that coaching staff was With big glasses you look like a polo geek at the time yeah he was kind of an underling but yeah there's some that isn't there a nfl didn't nfl films yes. or something do a documentary about the early 90s browns coaching it's great it's a fantastic Crazy. one a football life a football life. That's a, those things are outstanding. Mm-hmm. They are really good. I love the way NFL Network names their shows. A football life. I know because good, yeah. good morning football. 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 But they're, it's so spot on. It's like <laughs> you love us. There's nothing that you can do. In fact, if you don't lead, if you're not worthy of a football life documentary, what are you doing with your life? It's just yeah. It's just hilarious. They they don't need creative names. You love football. And you love the lives of people who play and commit to football. So we're going to call it a football life. As as he prepares for Purple Daily, Phil Mackey (laughs) gets up early. His football mug out. He pours orange juice. This is how Mackey. A little little, little too acidic for old Mackadack in the morning, the orange juice. He pours something. Acid reflux. This is how Phil lives his life. It's a football life. Pours a seltzer water. Yes. Anyhow. All right. Over to uh, Declan. All right. Write this down. Last one for me. Dwayne McBride will get more touches in preseason games than Ty Chandler. Okay. I feel like Ty Chandler has the leg up to be RB2, assuming, by the way, Dalvin Cook is off the roster. Ty Chandler is probably in line to be running back, too. But I'm going to say in the actual preseason football games that will take place, Dwayne McBride will have more touches than Ty Chandler. They're going to give him an opportunity to, uh, to maybe even earn the RB2 job. I think this is going to be neck and neck because if Dalvin's gone, I doubt Madison plays much right. in the preseason games. He probably gets a lot of run in the joint practices. And then my guess is you're going to see first half Ty Chandler, second half Dwayne McBride. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to have, I'm Slappies. sure, another running back or somebody Slappies too. coming in, yeah. Yeah, so this it could be a, a neck and neck situation there. Write this down. All right, write this down. I think Shannon Sharp is going to take Stephen A. Smith up on his <laughs> offer. Shannon Sharp will show up on first take with Stephen A. Smith before the end of the calendar year. Wow. Okay. I don't know if it's going to be full time. Yeah, if I, he I just doubt it'll pops be on. If he has a six month non compete or something, then I'm screwed. But I doubt that he does. Those national guys kind of kind of bounce around, and he's I think he's just leaving a contract that's expiring. So, uh, so Shannon Sharp will show wow. up. Stephen A. is basically begging him. To come over and debate him on first day. I I bet he takes the place of let's see, Michael Irvin. Because I don't I, think Irvin's going anywhere. 
I think they like Irvin on Mondays. Well, but, but I think that – so I, I think that in Stephen A's mind, it's a sweet spot that it's not one guy. And so they just, like, bring folks mm-hmm. in. And, like, the Mad Dog stuff is hilariously funny and it actually works. So, Dude, today yeah. they were yelling about – they were agreeing and still yelling at each yeah. other about Live Golf versus PGA. Oh, my – where do you think you filled your gas tank this morning? Where do you think that gas comes from? It comes from the Saudis. We're all hypocrites. Mad Dog, Mad Dog makes Stephen look totally normal. I know. He makes him look normal. So, so hilarious. Who, who takes Sharp's place? Because I saw Max Kellerman's name was dropped as a potential replacement for Sharp because it mm. sounds like McAfee is going is going to replace kellerman's time slot day part yes. wise and kellerman's show is going to be canceled i don't think Ke- kellerman's not he's not like a hot enough take he's more no. of like a logic reason he's great on a radio show where he can just kind of reason and logic his way through the day i agree and uh, that's why Stephen a got sick of him because he's like Stephen a is trying to fight you and max is like well here's a bunch right. of data that <laughs> i think uh they'll probably stick internal fox that is and just um shady and just put and put a uh, nick Wright. It's probably gonna go there. Wow. So I can see that too. I is love that. Right. Is that reported right now? No, but Nick, it's. I, I think it makes them. That's sense. a name that's been floated. Yeah. It was. It was Nick Wright, Max Kellerman, and I think Shady McCoy, who's on Fox Sports One right now. Okay. As potential reporter. Because Nick Nick Wright already has one of those Fox Sports One shows where it's yeah. kind of debatey. And he's but, sort of the star. He's the star of that. He's the show. best thing on that network, in my opinion. He's pretty yeah. funny, man. He. He's I think good. when he started off. Because he, he was there six or seven years ago, and they didn't really know how to use him. And I think he was, I think he was just like hot take guy only. But now he's pretty funny. So those guys are all just. What's funny about, when I hear criticism of like I can't watch Stephen A. You got these guys are just like entertaining. Yes, they're they're not there to be right. They're just there to yes be loud and entertaining, and they're all characters. St- Stephen A. is playing a character. Yes. That's all he does. Which it's like, like, being, it's it, like being Ric Flair in wrestling or something. What? You know why is he? he why also, is he so over the top? Because he's, try, he's trying to get people to watch him. Yeah. He also said that he uh, he he was pleased that that uh, Pat McAfee got more than he did because this means his next contract is going to be richer. <laughs> uh, and and meanwhile, genius. they're supposedly going to fire a bunch of people at the end of June. Like he, Disney is laying people off left and right. Yeah, well, why? I don't mean to be <laughs> insensitive here, but media is changing so aggressively. Yep. People are like, well, wait a second. You can't lay off these hundred people and then hire Pat McAfee. No, they're laying off those hundred people precisely so they can hire Pat McAfee. Yes. That's what they're doing. And, it, and maybe it's callous. Maybe it's, I don't know. It's, it is tough. People are losing their jobs, but, and then, and then of course for like ESPN and Disney to pretend like, no, they have nothing to do with each other. Sure. They do. Here's the amount of money you spend as a company. Here's the amount of money you bring in. And, and you're trying to keep a gap between the two. Yes. And they think Pat McAfee's going to bring in younger. They're also trying to get younger people to continue to consume ESPN. They're trying to put content behind their ESPN plus paywall, which eventually McAfee could be part of that too. So yes. anyways, well, we just got down like a media rabbit hole. That's interesting stuff. Mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins. So, so, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Barry McElroy. Mad Dog, I love Mad Dog, man. Dude, McElroy, real quick, and then we'll get to this Bill Bill Barnwell, a couple of really interesting nuggets about the Vikings in the fourth quarter. But um, Rory McElroy, everyone was waiting today, oh, what's he going to say about, he's been the one just banging on live golf for two years now or whatever, and he basically said, I just, I'm just resigned to it now, and uh, it's going to be good for the game in the long run. My guess is, they gave, they said, all right, let's get you a hundred million dollars. You can, gave them a little money. <laughs> they probably, probably had to. I mean, Fair all yeah. of those those guys who passed up that mammoth payday, right? Join live and we'll give you. And they're like, no, 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 we're staying PGA. So you're right. They Will Zalatoris turned down, I think, a hundred million dollars or a hundred fifty million dollars, and then he had to go get back surgery. And I think oh. he's going to come back fine because he's young. But imagine turning down nine figures and then needing back surgery as a golfer. Oh. Uh, brutal. Anyhow, so Bill Barnwell is the analytics guru for ESPN's football department. Declan, you track this down. This is a great nugget, and it goes hand in hand with what another analytics guy said. Uh, Sharp, what's the guy's name? Warren, Warren Sharp, Sharp. Sharp Football. Mm-hmm. We'll start with the Barnwell nugget. So I believe WPA stands for win probability, 
right? So the in the fourth quarter, the Giants generated 2.2 WPA in the fourth quarter overtime, which is the second best mark in football. The Vikings were the first. Cousins and company captured a staggering 6.1 WPA in the fourth quarter in overtime, putting them nearly four full wins clear of anybody else in 2022. Going back through 2009, no team had previously generated five WPA, let alone the six the Vikings generated, in the fourth quarter in a single season. The gap between how the Vikings performed in the fourth quarter and the first three quarters was seven and a half wins. Mm -hmm. No team since 2009 has improved their lot in the fourth quarter as significantly as the 2022 Vikings. And here's the nugget from Warren Sharp. So he listed all 32 teams based on their plus minus in point differential going into the fourth quarter last year. So for instance, at the top of the list, the Bills and the Eagles were outscoring their opponent by 150 total points each going into the fourth quarter last year. So they had comfortable leads. You can run the football. Maybe you can even run the score up on someone. San Francisco was plus 128. Kansas City was plus 126. Baltimore, Cincinnati, Dallas, Jacksonville, all plus 50 or better going into the fourth quarter. At the bottom of the list, the Cardinals were outscored by 102 points going into the fourth quarter. The Bears by 95 points and the Vikings by 87 points. Just behind Houston, Indianapolis, the Jets, Denver, and Atlanta, all teams that were vying for top five picks last year. Wow. And then the Vikings obviously were the best team in the fourth quarter point differential wise. So they were, what do you think of that? Do you buy more into the process that they were leaning on in the fourth quarter, which was their best football? Or does it make you a little nervous that for three quarters, they were one of the three worst teams in the NFL from a point differential standpoint? Well, yeah. And it's not, it's not a surprise to hear those stats because I mean, we saw the offense often have a good first drive and then disappear for essentially three quarters. We saw a defense that was often, unfortunately, the height of incompetence. So, like, nothing you say there, it, it's a wow, but it's not a, oh, that's not, that's got to be wrong. Um, but I think there's a problem. So, here's where the marriage of, of looking at statistics like that and facts like that and then trying to exactly tie them to the fact that the Vikings are destined now to drop off. And yes, if you played that season again with those players, they would not win 13 games. But here's where I think we run into a bit of a problem. And I do think that the Vikings are not going to win 13 games. And I do think that they are probably going to to take a step back. But I don't think that because, man, 2022 is, is, it's improbable and impractical that it's going to happen again. Um, my feeling is this, and this is where I think that we don't, I don't know if we don't want to go there or I don't know if it's too tough or what, but first of all, my expectation is this offense is going to be much improved from a consistency standpoint. And keep in mind, those numbers completely change if the offense had actually done its job in the second and third quarters, which they often didn't. Okay. So first of all, the Vikings put themselves in a bad predicament because the offense is inconsistency and then final gasp, which was great, was improbable, but it also is not practical from what you want. The other thing is I'm convinced this defense is going to be improved and I'm convinced it's going to be improved pretty substantially. I'm sorry, but I think that Donatel's philosophy was absolutely atrocious. And what Brian Flores is going to do is at least go down swinging. So with an offense that, in my opinion, scoring-wise should be in the top five, and with a defense that I think should be able to get mid-pack, I'm not going to crap on them completely. Like, I, th- I feel like Barnwell is saying, well, if you replay 2022, it can't happen again. Well, of course yeah. it can't. But this is football. And is there a sport where things change more drastically year to year? than football so i think it's sort of silly to to be like well they are there's no way that they can do that again no they can't but i think in some areas what they're going to do is they're going to find ways where they're not in those predicaments again yes the the, and there's some other stuff we can sprinkle some of these nuggets in throughout the next couple weeks too like the vikings had a lot of punts and 
drives that ended in punts or turnovers compared to some of the top teams, for instance. They go three and out a lot. They led the league in three and out two years ago before Kevin O'Connell took the reins. So there's been some, some of this is like, there's some Kirk Cousins common denominator in terms of like offense disappearing for long stretches. But when your defense 14 times last year, including the playoff game, allows at least 22 points in a game, it gives you no leeway where, oh, we happen to have a bad second and third quarter offensively. Well, for a lot of other teams, you can kind of have a hit or miss second and third quarter once in a while. And maybe you're still leading 14 to 13 because your defense is not a train wreck. So I agree. Like if the offense needs to get more consistent, but if the defense can just, I don't know, hold teams under 20 points a little more often, it happened only four times all year last year. Um, it would, it would just give you more leeway to not have to be flawless and perfect in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. Also in that article about Barnwell, just talking about winning one score game. So he went back to 1950 and he looked at NFL franchises that played at least five games decided by eight points or fewer and that went undefeated in those contests. So all those teams went a combined because everyone went undefeated and they played at least five of those games. They were 110 and 0. Okay, so all those teams. The next season, in that same group of teams. They went a combined 73, 68, and 4, so a winning percentage of 518. So basically, they they, they went from winning all their one-score games, and then the very next season, most of those teams combined finished to be about a 500 team. And and you said the Vikings played 11 of those last year? 11, they went 11, 11, NFL, 11 0? Which is an NFL record. No team so has let's ever say they go, 11. Let's say everything is the same, but they go 6 and 5 instead. That would make them... What's thirteen? So instead of th- thirteen wins, you'd take you'd take uh, five off. So you'd have it'd be they would have been like eight and nine, eight or mm-hmm. nine and eight or nine win team if they mm-hmm. had just kind of you know played five hundred football in those games. So interesting, but like Judd said, it's not linear. Everything right, and they've also changed the roster quite a bit too. I mean, the defense right. is totally different. And at the end of the day, this offense is built to score a ton of points. Like, this is not a, hey, let's rely, uh, because what was weird is all of the one score games actually spoke to, and this, of course, is not the truth, but if you just looked at that, it indicated a team that basically tried to score enough points to win and held on. Yeah. Like, this de- this offense, if you look at the personnel, right, it's geared to score a lot of points. Well, one of the, if the defense can even be respectable, I think the most important thing, the most important. So if there's like a, a chart of what are the most important things as a team for the 2023 Vikings, I think the most important thing is this consistency of the offense. I agree. Cause that's your calling card. Like the defense has to hold up, but this is not a defense first team. And th- that's why I keep saying the pressure in my opinion needs to be on the offense to be like a top five scoring. And if the defense can finish 16th, I'd be delighted. Yeah, go go score twenty eight points in the first half, and it's it, it's the type of defense too that it's going to operate disproportionately better with a lead because because Flores wants to be aggressive, wants to he wants to send extra blitzers, right? He wants to you want to have some leeway too, or if it doesn't work and you get burned in man coverage because it's going to happen with this defense. But anyways, yep. there's a lot of good discussions like that down the road here. We have theme weeks coming up on Purple Daily that we will unveil. Once the OTA and mandatory mini cams are over next week, uh, a shout out to our friends at Livia helping purple daily listeners lose a lot of weight over the past couple of years. Indeed. In fact, now a couple of years back, I dropped 40 pounds. And the most important thing is they are going to not only help you with their uh, dietitians and nutritionists drop that weight, but they're going to help you keep that weight off. I mean, look at that guy right there, huh? Last year at, at um, a wedding looking good feeling good. And now have I got an offer for you eight weeks for free and you can lose up to 15 pounds by the 4th of July. That's right. Eight weeks for free. And how would you like to be down 15 pounds by the 4th? My friends at Livia can help you do exactly that. 855 go L I V E A Livia.com L I V E A.com inside or outside the state. You can join they can help help you. There's uh, tons of folks from our PD family who can tell you about their positive experience dropping weight. Livia.com is where that experience starts. Dex, old Macadac, a couple days ago, went to manscaped.com, got himself a new beard trimmer. 
There you I'm go. sick of all the little accessories and stuff. Just give me, just give me a good beard trimmer <laughs> that I can plow through this masterpiece. And I used the promo code purple at the end of that experience. It was Which great. gives you 20% off plus free shipping. And of course, Father's Day is coming up. Okay. Maybe even your father-in-law, your father, your uncle, your brother, whoever the heck you want to give a dad a gift to. I would go to your friends at Manscaped. They're dedicated to below the waist grooming. They're perfect for, yes, the lawnmower or uh, or up top with the beard. Uh, you And the best thing, one of the better things about this, too, is, is they can give you all this great stuff that you need down there, too. They'll give you the ball wipes, the crop reviver, the ball toner, the preserver. I know yeah. this might sound foreign to you. Like, we, we put deodorant on our bodies. Why aren't we putting deodorant on our footballs? It's important Dude. to do that as well, okay? And, again, 20% off when you go to manscaped.com, use promo code PURPLE, for 20% off plus free shipping, get get your dad a gift at manscaped.com. Promo code 20% off and free shipping. Your dad, here's the gift of fresh shaved and fresh smelling footballs. You're welcome from your son. All right, boys. That's a wrap on today's prediction episode of Purple Daily. Daily Vikings Entertainment. Tomorrow, random Viking of the week. Yesterday, if you missed it, Judd's OTA observations. And then we'll send Judd to mandatory minicamp. It's mandatory for Judd also. With sunscreen this time. Mm -hmm. With sunscreen. And uh, we will have, fingers crossed, Kevin O'Connell at some point in the near future making his second appearance ever on Purple Daily. So if you guys have suggestions for things you'd like us to ask him, let us know in the next, I don't know, five or six days, and we can uh, incorporate some of those in. We'll see you guys tomorrow here. Daily Vikings Entertainment.